Hi, everyone. Welcome as you're coming in. We're so glad you're here for the 8A webinar. My name is Emily Feuder, and I'm the Vice President of Programs and Marketing for National ACE. We are based out of DC, and we represent the interests of 2.65 million AAPI small business owners and entrepreneurs. Our goal is to assist AAPI small businesses, and we do that through collaborating with our 120 affiliate minority chambers and partner organizations across the country. I'm so glad you are here. We have some great speakers lined up for you, and we are also streaming live on Facebook. So hello if you're on Facebook, and hello if you are in the webinar. And there we go. I'm going to pass it over to our friend and supporter at PayPal, Paul Disselcone. He's the senior associate for PayPal's public affairs team. His primary focus on the team is on small business advocacy, policy research, and thought leadership. He manages PayPal's engagement on small businesses and economic equity. And he also engages with government officials and leads partnerships with entrepreneurs. And he's a great storyteller too. Paul, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks so much, Emily, um, and welcome everybody uh, to the webinar today. Um, it, it, it's great to have everybody with, with us. Uh, today we will learn about the 8A program um, and what are the biggest barriers to access and how an 8A contract can transform your business. Um, as you all know, access to federal contracts is one of the biggest challenges for AAPI small business owners. Um, and we're here today to help to mystify the process of getting started with contracting with the government uh, in order to take your business to the next level. Um, you know, small businesses are our core to what we care about here at PayPal. Um, and our partnership with National ACE um, has been extremely rewarding. Um, you know, we have uh, a really strong focus on access to capital um, and the, the partnerships over the years um, has allowed us to, you know, work with National ACE to help uh, some of the local chambers, um, but also um, show within our own small business lending programs um, how alternative financing, you know, can really help to reach the smallest businesses and, and small businesses that are in uh, really underserved communities. Um, but beyond access to capital, um, access to contracts is extremely important as well. And, and that's what we're here uh, to talk about today with the 8A uh, program. Uh, and we have a great lineup of speakers for you today. Um, first and, and foremost, Demarcus Walker, uh, who is legislative assistant for the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship. Uh, in his role, he covers issues relating to contracting and innovation, including the small business innovation research and small business technology transfer programs, uh, which he helped to negotiate last fall uh, an extension for uh, in uh, 2022, which extended both programs through 2025. Uh, we also have uh, Payal Kamdar, uh, CEO of VSolvit, um, which is a successful women-owned technology services provider with various federal government customers. VSolvit's expertise in data analytics, business intelligence, data warehousing, facilities management, geographic information systems, and application development has been recognized at a national level. Payal measures her success by two criteria how well vSolvit serves its customers and community, and how well vSolvit enables its team members to elevate their performance. Uh, so with that, I will hand it off to DeMarcus uh, to get the conversation started. Hello, Paul, and hello, everybody. I wanna make sure y'all can see me. Got it. So sorry, everybody. So yes, as Paul said, I'm my name is Marcus Walker. I'm the legislative assistant for the Senate Small Business Committee majority staff. In my role, I handle pro procurement and uh, contracting for the committee. And uh, so yeah, this is really where I come and help to solve issues that are affecting small businesses who are looking to contract uh, with the federal government and all the issues, all the programs that that relate really to that, including the 8A hub zones, things like that. Um, I'm lucky to work for a chairman like Senator Cardin, who is primary uh, 
goal is to increase federal contracting and just include increase the involvement of minority businesses into the federal uh, government space and how we can better collaborate and make sure that they have a, a position to contribute to our economy in terms of project opportunities and things like that. And so I'm happy to be working with, with him to solve these issues. He's equally excited to work with our new ranking members, Senator Joni Ernst. They have a lot of interest in trying to improve the way that contracting works for for our minorities and small business owners. Um, and we see that we have opportunities uh, throughout this Congress to try to address those, those issues. Last year, he did address, he did introduce um, the Federal Contract and Fairness Act, which would do several things to improve the AA program, but also small business contracting in general. So for example, it would, it would introduce it would implement uh, SBA to be part of the FAR Council, which is the body that determines policy and how small business contracting works across all government agencies. We feel that the Small Business Administration has a significant role to play in, on that council in terms of making sure that the voices of small businesses are being heard during this council. So we're, we're excited to try to bring that across the board. We also wanted to, again, improve how the 8 a program works in general. So it, uh, another thing that the bill would do, it would increase the participation from nine years to 10 so that there's parity for those who started uh, the program before September 2020 and after. Because of the pandemic, we, 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 we want to make sure there's parity in the program for that. We also have a provision in the bill that would that would allow businesses to on ramp into the program. So it would allow people up to three years uh, to kind of get their their feet wet, trying to make sure they're familiar with the program um, to in order to to get those those extra three years. You would have to take uh, twelve year twelve hours of training and courses over the, over your first three years, and then your clock to to remain in the program would begin until uh, when you get your first eight eight contract. So this would allow some kind of uh, stability for people to again get familiarized with the program while getting the training that they would need so that they feel that they're well equipped to compete for that first contract once that opportunity becomes. And then we'd also uh, introduce an offering period so that in the last three years of your time into the program, your income threshold would increase so that you can continue to, so that you can grow and continue to, to, to compete for and win eight day contracts and allow you to transition out of program without any hitches or anything like that. It would also increase the sole source threshold for uh, for eight day contracts and across all other sets of programs, including hub zone, women owned small businesses, things like that. Um, and then as something that we, we're, we're excited that the SBA has um, has taken the steps necessary to streamline the certification process to to to, to become a day certified. That's something that they're continuing to work on. That's something that is in our bill. So we're thrilled that the SBA took the initiative to try to do that on their own. So we're happy about things like that. And it also it would include, include funding to to allow us to be able to hire procurement officers and recruitment re recruitment managers so that people are able to meet businesses where they are to make sure that they're aware of of, of contracting opportunities and programs that they may be able to tap into. And all of this is to say all of this couples with the opportunity that we have for this Congress. We're excited with we're excited of the dynamic um, that the ranking member Senator Ernst provides to work with our Chairman Cardin. Again, as I said, there's a lot of opportunities for us to collaborate. We're looking forward to introducing this bill again. It may be a little different, but the end goal is to make sure that contracting works for all small businesses, in particular the DNA program, and make sure that you know it, there are issues that we are aware of, and we're continuing to identify those issues, and we hope to again, try to solve as many of those issues that we can in a bill that would be included as a 
potential SBA re reauthorization package. So these are all things that we're aware of. And you know, uh, I, I also wanna use, use this opportunity to hear from everyone here, any comments, concerns that y'all are hearing from the ground. I wanna be sure that I'm as informed as possible on my end so that I can bring this back to my colleagues. We can continue to, again, look for issues that are impacting AA small businesses and make sure that we can address them in any package that we can try to address. I mean, we can try to in introduce it in the next couple of weeks. So um, that's all I have. I'm happy to, again, speak, speak, for, speak more in later on in, in the webinar. And again, any questions or concerns you may have, I'm happy to hear them and we can, again, circle back and see how we can address it going forward. Thanks so much, Demarcus. I actually do have a question for you just to, off the bat. Can you, in layman's terms, for those on the webinar, explain what the 8A program is and why it affects small business owners? Yeah, so the 8A program is a, it's actually 8A business development program. It allows those who the government deems to be socially disadvantaged. So there are groups that that, that the government assumes has been historically disadvantaged, such as, such as minority, Black, Brown, Asian Americans, people like that. But it also includes people who 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 operate in industries that may be dominated by by other people so a, a proper example that we use are women who operate in the construction industry they would be considered um socially disadvantaged so we want to make sure that people in these spaces have opportunities to collaborate with the federal government to win contracts and build their own businesses and allow them to scale and allow them to contribute to our, our economy on a uh, on a longer period of time. Thank you so much, Demarcus. And also, if you do have questions, like we said in the chat, add them to the Q&A, and we'll have time at the end uh, to get through some of those questions. So don't be shy. You can even do it anonymously if you are feeling shy. It's okay. But we do prefer if you can put your name and if you have the industry you work in as well, that would help us answer the question potentially. So thank you so much, Demarcus. Next on the agenda, we have Pyle Kamdar, so I will send it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, DeMarcus. Wonderful changes coming to the 8A program. I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm Pyle Kamdar. Thank you for the opportunity to share my, my experiences. And before I, I go into the set of experiences, I want to put in a plug for the SBA and the 8A program. Um, can you imagine, you know, where in the world where you have a program where it sets you up for a business, it teaches you all the basic things that you need to know, and, you know, where, where uh, an immigrant like me has even a dream of starting a business, not only did they help me start the business, they helped me grow it, and today we are, we're a thriving business with 400 plus people, so thank you to the SBA, thank you to the 8A program, I don't think we could have done it without you all, so I'll, I'll start with that plug. A little bit about you know who we are, what we do, right? Um, as I said, my name's Pyle. My company name is We Solve It. It's a play on words. We solve IT, and we started the company in uh, 2006. We, meaning my husband and I, started the company in 2006. We're both technologists, and I wanted to bring IT innovation to the federal government. The Navy needed a, a strong set of technical skills, you know, where it was a marriage of GIS, IT, Oracle, and a few things, and I had the perfect blend of skills. And that's where the journey began, where it was born with a clear mission. We were here to save the, uh, serve the Navy and along the way um, establish you know, financial security for us uh, as a family. So that, that was our humble beginnings. And uh, we researched, you know, we're, we're technologists. So we researched it heavily. We're trying to figure out LLC, C Corp, S Corp, and along the way attended numerous such webinars. So uh, thank you to the National ACE Program to support us because it, it's invaluable. And then we, we went through PTAC and SCORE and all of these other resources, SBA, just to make sure we understood what the rules of the game were, how do we do, met with a bunch of uh, successful business owners to understand their journey what, and you know, the reflections on their journey. Um, along that path, we realized that the, the 8A program was a really important asset for growth. But then you also, you know, I'm, uh, I'm grateful to hear that DeMarcus is saying it's gonna get extended to 10 years. Um, at that point it was, it, you know, it is nine years. So we had to very carefully choose when do you enter the program? You don't wanna prematurely enter the program 
because that becomes a challenge, right? You're, you're not set up, you're not ready. And, you know, you don't want to be waiting too long because you don't maximize because those, you know, that time period goes so quickly. It's like, it feels like a blink of an eye kind of thing. So ultimately we did apply. We waited till we were at the two year mark and we applied into the program. We were ex uh, accepted in the program after a few months. And it was, it's been an outstanding experience. And um, it was, it was challenging at time. I mean, you know, as, as uh, I, I like the way the new program or, you know, the revisions that are coming in, you, you're, the, by the time you really understand the program, you're ready for graduation. So um, I'm grateful to hear that, you know, that there are these boundaries being set up where you can on-ramp, off-ramp, and uh, a lot of the structure is being worked on. So Demarcus, if you ever need more feedback from someone on the ground, happy to give you that. You know, a lot of questions get asked, right? What, what were your barriers to the, the 8A program? How did you overcome it? To me, it was learning opportunities. I mean, it, it's such a, such a vast program. There are so many different agencies and sometimes it, it becomes very challenging. Like once you enter the, the program, there is, there is the basic training, but most people come, you know, most of the, the starting 8A businesses have this idea that the minute you enter the 8A program, you know, the contracting offices are gonna call you off the, the, the bat and, and have all these amazing contracts just ready for you. And the reality is that's not the way the program is set up. It's a license to hunt. And you're, you're given the ability to compete for programs, which under ordinary circumstances you would not be given. And it helps you build up that capabilities, uh, ensuring that you have the relationships with the customers. So as and when, when you graduate from the 8A program, you are really well worth to go swim in the open waters, right? And th those are the skills you wanna really develop in the 8A program. You wanna understand you know, the business development side. You wanna understand the transition side. You wanna understand the capabilities that you really need to build up, whether it's you know, getting your DCA side of things, whether it's getting a CMMI certification or whatever uh, you know, pertinent certifications are needed for, for your business line. The, the opportunities are quite a bit and you have to really understand how to maximize and as a business owner, understand what do you wanna invest in and what do you not wanna invest in? We also were very, very blessed to participate in the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business because you know, as, 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 he, as any young business owner, you, you would understand, you're constantly chasing, you're running the operations, you're running BD, you're running pricing, you're running you know, accounting, you're making sure that payroll is going through, right? So a lot of different things are coming together. And at some point you've got to pause and go, how do I work on the business and not in the business? And that was one of the, the, the biggest lessons I really learned from the Goldman Sachs program. Um, what, you know, if I had to put the, the different parts of the journey in here, like how did 8A completely transform my business? Honest to Lord, we saw it would not be here without the 8A program. We're, we're you know, very grateful for the opportunities that were given to us, the doors that it opened, the relationships we were able to build, the, the basic infrastructure, like the certifications, the DCA skills, those kind of things we were able to build. Um, we, and, and I love the way the, the, the program is designed, right? The first few years, you're, you're learning the business development. The next few years, you're learning the transition of how do you go out and become you know, a, a much smaller, larger business kind of thing. You're, you're no longer as dependent on the 8A program and it forces you to have a balanced approach of you know, having non-8A revenue. That was the hardest per period for us because we had just figured out how to master the 8A program. You're like trying to get all the sole sources in and now you know, the program is forcing you to make sure you learn how to start working that transition side because as I said, the, the, the time period, the nine years go by very quickly. So today we are, we're, you know, 50% of our business is absolutely unrestricted, which is we've learned how to bid the full and open market, go up against the large boys and, and win work. So, and honestly, this would not have been truly possible without that, that forcing function. I, I remember the first year I was in the transition year, I'm sitting with my SBA person and they're like, Pile, where's that 15%? And I'm like, oh, oh my Lord, I can't do this. How do I do this? So I'm, I'm glad they, they forced and pushed us into it. 
So very grateful for, for the way the, the program is set up and you have to learn how to use it well. To me, a, a lot of the, uh, the, the biggest challenges I, I uh, just touched upon it a few minutes ago here was how do you wean off the program? How do you learn that you know, the, the structure is set up, you've got to learn to fly, you've got to be able to go out and do what it's, uh, you know, a lot of the benefits go away that you have in the 8A program, the sole sources, the ability to talk to the customer freely, the ability where they, they teach you and walk you through. Uh, once you're in, in the full and open unrestricted world or even the largest small business contracts, um, the, the, the benefits you have with the 8A program go away and you, you start learning that pretty well and quickly. Um, what would my, my advice be? Um, being part of the 8A program is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Grab it, use it very wisely, Make sure that you are your. It's not just going and getting full forces, right? It's also building your company. Be be picky. Be mindful of what opportunities you're going after. Don't go after everything that's not in your swim lane, but something that's adjacent. Like for us, you know, IT, cyber. These were very much in our swim lane, and we made sure we went out. If given that we are pure IT, and if I had someone come and say, "Hey, do you want to do a construction project?" As much as that revenue is amazing, it, at some point you're, keep in mind the 8A program ends and then you will have to exit the program and be able to sustain your business. So make sure you're, you're very mindful of you know, how you go through this journey. Um, the, the next one was you know, leverage the, uh, the resources we have, whether it's the, the SBA, whether it's the PTAC, whether it's the, the National ACE, take your time, go talk to all the successful, you know, business owners who have un, gone through the 8A program and have been very successful. And also those who have not been very successful because you wanna learn those lessons so that you don't make the same mistakes, right? Um, but very, very definite goals. I mean, one of the things which is very nice with the 8A program is every year when you do your renewal, it tells you, you know, what is your, your game plan for this year? What are your goals? What are your financial goals? What do you wanna set it up for? And we, we really stuck to that. We, we made sure that you know, we had our goals set up. We knew what exactly uh, industries we wanted to start penetrating into. What, what, what kind of work did we wanna do? What exactly did we wanna establish? And for each year, what did we wanna get out of it? So with, with that, I just wanna say, hopefully I've shared a lot of different information. Happy to help you with, with the Q&A. And thank you very much for allowing me to share my experience and back to you, Emily. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. And I actually have a quick question for you. You mentioned a bunch of the resources uh, and support to help you understand the requirements. Um, you mentioned SCORE. So did you use SCORE.org, one of their mentors, to help you get started? Or how did you utilize specifically that resource? So I, I'll share my story on that one. So we, you know, when I first was introduced to SCORE, I didn't realize that it was SCORE.org, right? I thought it was local, you know, and, and we're, uh, we were based out of Ventura County at that point. And I, I started going through and there were a couple of resources, but I was not getting the help that I really needed. Finally, I tripped on to SCORE.org and I found some folks in East Coast, Minnesota, Louisiana, and they were a wealth of information. These were people who had been contracting officers, who had been, you know, had a lot of business development experience, had pricing information. And it was really cool because I had folks who I could just sound things out. I mean, especially when you're a small growing business, you don't have the ability to take an NDA and TA and send it to a legal firm, which is going to char charge you astronomical. And it's really nice that after my review, I could run it by somebody else who has been there, done that and able to guide you in that process. So yeah, it, it was an exceptional opportunity. So score.org is a, it's a beautiful place to go and check out all the resources. Thank you. And then another question that, I, that came up as I was listening was, you said your SBA connection reminded you that you, you had to match at 15%. Tell me more about how you got an SBA connection. Where would a small business owner start with that? So as, as part of the 8A program, you're assigned a, a business development uh, person, a, a specialist out there. And they, they watch you, they keep track of you, they help you out all the time. And uh, I, I know that when I started um, the SP program in LA, it was uh, Kathy Clark. She was phenomenal. 
And I, I think I bugged her way too much <laughs> to a point she was like, here are the resources, go study all of these things, make sure you read the FAR, DFAR, so you understand it. So it, it was, I mean, a lot of direction is given, but at the end of the day, the onus is st still on the business owner to put in the effort and, and learn and master the, the material. Thank you. And then we did get a question for DeMarcus from Evan Chan in the Q&A. So the question is, can an entity hold multiple certifications concurrently, i.e. 8A and WOSB? Thank you in advance. So the answer is yes, you can be certified uh, for multiple, um, you know, set aside 8A, you obviously have to meet those thresholds, you have to be, you know, my minority owned or any other socially impacted uh, individual. You can also be a WASB or women's own small business certified. You have to be, for that certification, you have to be at least 51% owned or operated by a woman owned small business or by a, owned or operated by a woman. And then uh, the actual hub zone certified. So those are uh, areas where the government deems to be, you know, distressed areas, you can qualify for those as well. So you can, tap into as many of these opportunities as possible. The federal government wants you to be able to tap in, into those things. We wanna make sure that those who are, again, historically been re removed from the table have access to those opportunities. And so, yes, we it's, it's a good thing that you are able to s certify across many different uh, um, programs. Great, and then um, another question, a couple more are coming in. So, can you get an 8A for one business and do another one for a second business? I think that one might be for DeMarcus as well. Yeah, sorry, turn off my camera. Yeah, yeah, so I, I believe you can, yes. And again, uh, the SBA has, has, has places where you can go to again to reach out. To, I mean, I know uh, I all said uh, she talked to PTAX, which are procurement technical assistance centers. The SBA has now rebranded this to become Apex Accelerators and uh, APEX Accelerators. And these are these are areas where you can go to to get free or low charges, uh, low cost assistance programs, and they can direct you to opportunities that you may be beneficial of. They can offer you technical assistance and they are just in general there to help you. So you can see if there are any in your area and they can kind of point you into the right direction and see where can you maximize your own benefits and again, contribute to, you know, or tap into opportunities that are out there and available to you. So just looking up Apex quickly, um, it's A-P-E-X accelerators is what it's called and those are on a state level is my understanding so like if you're in utah you go and look at the utah apex accelerator and that's supported through the government so it's business.utah.gov forward slash apex um i know actually sincera her question's coming in and she's actually based in utah and her question was what are the best beginning first steps and best practices micro enterprises and small businesses who want to apply for 8A can do to prepare themselves or to have a greater advantage. So what's the first step? <laughs> well, it's, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. So again, SBA has, uh, we, we want to make sure that SBA has these um, buildings and establishments where they can meet small businesses or prospective small business owners where they are and make sure that they have the resources that they can uh, tap into. So you can go to your local small business development center, SBDC. They're located all across the country. They can offer free and low cost assistance. Um, you can always go to, to them and they can always point you in, in, into the right direction. You can also reach out to your local SBA district office, your local SBA regional offices. Those They also have those resources. And again, they can direct you to anyone in, in, in your area. There's a massive ecosystem where they're all collaborating with each other and they will have uh, the, best the, the best information for you and direct you into those, in, into the right uh, places where you want to end up going to. And then we are getting some questions about net uh, dollar thresholds and net incomes. Um, so what are the dollar thresholds for getting no bid contracts with federal government, with the federal government? That's from Gladstone. 
Yes. So for non-manufacturing, it's currently 4.5 million. That's the sole source that, that you can uh, that you can compete for. And then for manufacturing, it's 7 million. The bill that Senator Cardin uh, introduced last year, along with Senator Duckworth, is called the federal, again, the Federal Contracting Fairness Act. Uh, that would increase the threshold for non-manufacturing from 4.5 million to 10 million. That would be the sole source of uh, award and then for manufacturing it would go up from 7 million to 14 million so those are the uh, levels that, that you can win uh, without competition thank you and we also got another question that you already answered but it was two parts so the second part is how much revenue should or can come from one client or source um i i the number it, it escapes me um, I'm happy to look into that and give you a better answer uh, after the call. But uh, yeah, but that is something that that the bill would address. It would allow you to increase that so that you can able to you're able to grow and continue to to compete uh, to participate in the program while also being pre prepared to trans transition off and win a contracts on a unrestricted, fully competitive space. Perfect. Thank you. And then um, I just wanted to also ask about industries in general, because we have people from all walks of life on the call and all industries. And one thing that we kind of put out there was the government does buy everything from paper clips to tanks. But from your perspective, what is an industry that might be an unexpected one that could receive government contracts? And I know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> So if you need a second to think, that's fine. Oh, I mean, in the, like you said, they are they're everywhere, especially right now, uh, as as we've made all these investments into our infrastructure, there's going to be a lot of different industries that are going to be looped in to that from from contracting to all the sub subcategories within or from, from from construction to all the subcategories within construction to engineering. There's all kinds of industries that are going to be able to tap into these uh, government uh, uh, contract opportunities, particularly with infrastructure and how the funding from the the infrastructure bill continues to flow into the states and local governments. The answer is you would be surprised at what kind of contracts the federal government is putting out there. So I, I wouldn't sell yourself short. Um, there's there's all kinds of uh, contract opportunities. You can go to sam.gov, and that's a website that that you can use to see what kind of what kind of um, contract opportunities are out there, and it'll, it'll list the NICS code uh, that is required. If you already have a NICS code, you can filter contract opportunities by by those NICS codes and see what kind of opportunities are out there across the federal government. Thanks so much. And then another question came in. This might actually be for Pyle for your own experience. So um, I know both of you could answer, but do you need qualifications every year for nine years to meet the criteria? What happens after the nine years? So for every year that you renew, and, and Demarcus, I mean, I, I don't know the, the new part that he has the bill. I haven't reviewed that in, in carefulness, but for the, the, the program that's currently in place, Every year there is uh, certain renewals that are required. They, they check for your, you know, as I mentioned, the 8A, non-8A revenues, they check for your personal income. There are quite a few of these criteria that you have to uh, meet up. Uh, once you graduate from the program, I don't believe there are any such requirements after that. So while you're in the program, they're pretty strict with the, the regulations that you have to meet with. Thank you so much. I don't see any other questions in the Q&A. So if you have a last minute one, hit send now. I'll wait a second here. But I am just so grateful for this opportunity with DeMarcus and Pyle sharing their experience, letting us know how to get into this program. What does it mean? How does it affect people? If you look at the chat, you're going to see uh, some of the links that were discussed. So, so to recap, sam.gov is where you can go just to get an idea of what government contracts are out there. And if your industry is something that could get a government contract, you also can see score.org. That's what Pyle was talking about in terms of mentors. So 
you can go and get a mentor there, but you also can connect with people in your area who might be contracting experts who can really give you some advice on where to get started and what you need to do, what kind of certifications you might need. And that is a free resource, score.org. Then there's also sba.gov, that longer link that I sent through, that's with the Small Business Development Centers or SBDCs. Those are all over the United States. And those are also partnership hubs to the SBA to help you understand what contracts are available for you. How can you grow your business? What do I need to be doing to scale? What certifications do I need to get? All of these links are in the chat, so be sure to look there. Uh, we will have this recording. It's already on Facebook, so you can go back and look at it. And then I'm seeing, I actually got a couple more questions. Pa, yes, the score.org is now in the chat. Um, and then in terms of your own industry, be sure to check sam.gov and that'll let you know if your industry might be one that could use these contracts. A couple more questions that came out um, is in terms of contact emails. Let me put mine in the chat if there's additional questions. If I don't know the answer, I will work to get it for you. So I'm going to put my email too in there. And then there was one last question that hopefully DeMarcus can help me out with. And it is, what is the average AGI for three years to apply for 8A? Well, let me let me answer the first one first. So uh, the the income that you have to have to in order to to stay in the program, you have to have a, a personal income or personal net worth of no more than 850000 uh, the Federal Contract and Fairness Act would allow you to go up to three times that amount. So you can have up to 2.5 million in personal net worth. Uh, that will allow you to, again, grow uh, grow your business and allow you to, again, compete for those eight-day contracts and transition uh, better uh, overall. And then I have to get you an answer for that second question. I'll be doing that. I'll, I'll probably send it to you, Emily, and you can uh, share it across the group. Great. And if there are any more questions, send them to me via email. Again, if I can't answer them, I'll find someone who can. We want to be a resource for you and get you plugged into your local resources as well. Um, thank you, everyone who joined us today for the 8A Small Business program. We're really excited about this opportunity, and we hope to see you again on potentially a part two. Candace wasn't able to join us today due to an unexpected situation, and she really wishes she could have been here, but we do want to tap her knowledge, so we will probably continue this conversation. So be on the lookout for a couple more programs around this so that we can help support you. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.